Thanks for watching, living on the cheap and trying to figure it out. Today we're doing a collab. Wrote it down because you know, I'm so great at remembering these things. Anyways, the collab's called Five Ways Your Life Has Changed Since Starting Your Debt Free Journey. Five. I actually had problems coming up with the fifth because I just couldn't think of something. Keep watching and you'll see what I did. living on the cheap and trying to figure it out. Today I just wanted to do um, a little bit of a shout out before I start. If any of you are YouTubers out there, new, starting out, old, been here for a while, either way, we'd love you to join our collaboration group on Facebook. So if you'd like to join our group, you could be part of the collab for next week. We do a collab, we put out a collab every Monday and we actually uh, do a vote on Tuesday and then Wednesday you'll see what you can do. So today's uh, topic. Blah, blah, blah. Can't even speak. Too much coffee. Gotta remember to cut back. Today's topic, five ways your life has changed since starting your debt-free journey. So one of the biggest, I wrote notes because if I don't write notes I forget and I start talking about who knows what. Like I'm doing now. Gotta get on topic. Anyhow, number one, I don't shop the same. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of cross-border shopping because we have a cabin in the States actually just across the border. It takes me half an hour to get to the border from where I live and it takes me about another 20 minutes to get to my cabin. It's actually a family cabin, so a bunch of us go. <clears throat> but anyhow, um, we do quite a bit of shopping because there is a town just on the other side. Uh, there's a grocery store two minutes from the border, but if I want to go a little bit further, another half hour will take me into um, a town. And uh, there's lots of shopping and lots of variety of stores and department stores and grocery stores and all kinds of stuff. But yesterday we went to the States and I need to pick up some pop. I knew I wanted to pick up some pop because it's like more than half off in the States compared to here. Even with the 25% um, not interest. No, not interest. What's it called? Exchange rate. <laughs> I do know what I'm saying. I really do. Anyhow, even with the exchange rate, it's still much cheaper for me to buy it there to, than to buying it here. So, Yesterday I went down to the first grocery store that was five seconds from the border. It's about two minutes. But anyways, I went to that grocery store, bought about $50 worth of pop and cereal because the cereal, sugary cereals are dirt cheap down there too. I buy the multi meal um, in the large, large bags. <clears throat> and down there, the giant bags are $8.39. Up here, the small bags are about $7.99. So even with the exchange rate, it's a really good deal because of the amount I'm getting. So yeah, I bought three, four, four giant bags of cereal and the rest was all pop. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So then I thought, well, I'm going to go have lunch at Fred Meyer, which is a little bit further down. Um, they have an excellent deli, so you can get some fresh food. It's not always, you know, uh, food that's been sitting around. <clears throat> so I went and did that. And then I thought, well, since I'm here, I'm going to shop around and see what I can get. And I ended up, seriously, I think I spent five bucks. <laughs> I could not, I could not buy any clothes. I could not buy any shoes. Couldn't buy any accessories. I even went into the makeup section, which I do have to get an eyebrow pencil for my daughter for her theater show that's coming up in June, but she doesn't need it till late May. Um, <clears throat> but any practice, because I'm not very good at doing eyebrows, I don't, like, I mean, I tweeze mine, but I don't actually color them in. So I need to learn, buy it, practice on her. And uh, I could, I just couldn't do it. For uh, the cost down there, then you have to ex uh, think about that 25% exchange rate added to the dollar um, because the American dollar is a lot stronger than the Canadian dollar right now and uh, it wasn't worth it. A lot of the stuff I could get for the same price or nearly the same price in Canada so I was like well why spend the money when I can get it for the same price here or cheaper even and then the other thing was did I really need it? I was looking at some runners I'm like do I really need it? Not right now. And then I'm looking at some clothes do I really need it? Not right now. And so like, I did that throughout the whole store. I even looked at the American milk and I was going to buy it. And it is drastically cheaper than ours, but there is a difference. And my youngest daughter is very particular about her milk. She notices the difference without even reading the label. So I was like, do I? Uh, you know what? I don't think I will. And so I didn't, besides the pop, don't get me wrong, I just spent $50 on pop. I only spent $5 at the second grocery store. We ended up not doing any more shopping. I ended up not going to any other store which when, before I hit the border, I was intending to go to about four or five different stores. But after my experience at Fred Meyer, I thought, why am I wasting my time wandering around looking at things when I'm not gonna buy anything? So yeah, that's my first thing that's changed is the way I shop. 
Um, I used to shop nilly willy, buy everything that I could find, and now I don't, absolutely. The other thing is I now have sinking funds. A sinking fund is when you're saving money and you're putting money towards this fund, whether it's weekly, monthly, it's up to you. Um, and I actually have three different sinking funds. One is for the car, um, for oil changes, any kind of, um, you know, the tires go, if the brakes go, that kind of stuff. So maintenance for the car. And I put, I think, $100 every week, uh, sorry, every payday. So that's $200 a month on top of my gas money. <clears throat> and so that's one sinking fund. The other sinking fund I have is the braces because I have to pay $300 monthly. So again, I put in $300 monthly every month so that I can pay the orthodontist um, uh, monthly. So that way I'm not really losing any money and it's budgeted for and it's automatically, it's actually an automatic thing. I don't even put the money into that account. Yes, I have an account called braces. And my last um, one is my older daughter who's not taking post-secondary school but is taking some classes. So she's only taking one class right now. Um, and we have to put make a sinking fund so that we can renew that class when the time comes so that she doesn't surprise us like she did this last time. So this time I know I have to pay $800 uh, come May 1st. So we have the money and we're ready to give that to her. So for her to pay for school. So sinking funds. Never heard of them before till I saw somebody else's video talk about sinking funds and then I had to research a little bit more into what were sinking funds. I think Dave Ramsey talks about it, but I probably just uh, read quickly over that section of the book and really didn't pay attention when I first started this journey. But now we have sinking funds and I love it. Oh, I do have another one. <clears throat> I completely forgot. See, my bank account lets me put money into a separate account. So I have my regular checking account, which our pay goes into, and then I take out money so I have, you know, so much money going into braces, so much money going into Lauren's post-secondary. That's what we call the account. And then I actually have another one, the emergency baby emergency fund. And that one you're supposed to have a thousand dollars in the bank before you even go to step two, which I do. But before I even started doing this um, journey, I was having a hundred dollars being put from every payday into that account. So that kind of bumps up my um, emergency fund just a little bit which I've been finding very handy because sometimes a thousand dollars is not enough for certain things. And so it's been very handy to have that. And again, I don't miss the money because I know I have certain bills to pay. I pay those bills and I, this is all on my budget, by the way, I pay all those bills with those amounts. And I know that these amounts are coming up when I do my budget, but because it comes out automatically, I don't see it. I don't miss it. So that's two. My uh, number three, is I have a plan for my money. Not a budget, a spending plan. And some people will call it a budget and that's fine. My husband likes to call it a spending plan because it makes him feel not so much restricted. And with a budget, you're not supposed to feel restricted. It's more about telling your money where to go. So a lot of us who have fallen into this, and I see this with other people that when I watch their videos, is that, yeah, you um, got yourself into trouble because you didn't have a spending plan. So, you know, you'll go out and buy three cups of coffee out and it'll cost you $5 a cup. It's $15 a day through Monday for Friday. Oh my God, that's a lot of money at the end of the month. Whereas now we have a budget that says what we can spend on going out for coffee and what we can, or going out with girlfriends, I call it. I no longer go out for just a cup of coffee or pick up a coffee on my way to somewhere. I make it at home, which saves a ton of money. I totally recommend it. And if you like lattes, go buy a machine. Um, a simple machine that goes on your stovetop, which is what I bought, can cost anywhere from $20 to $30. How many cups of coffees do you need to make to pay that off? Not much at all. So yeah, uh, number four, don't eat out. So yes, this one's a bit of a sore spot with me and it's the one that gets me into trouble um, when I do have bad months. Uh, we used to eat out all the time, every day, sometimes twice a day, which is horrible for our budget, horrible for our spending, horrible for our money, and horrible for our debt. So we've changed that. We only eat out once a month. And yeah, we're back on that schedule. Last month, you'll see a video where I screw that up badly, but we're back on track and everything's good. So we'll go somewhere nice at the end of April. And my last but not least, one of our changes is we changed our cable. And you're like, what? What's that going to do with things? Well, I find everybody gets a cable package. You know, that's kind of like the big step. You buy a house or move in or you have your own place and you get a cable package and a phone line, a landline. And we've been living in the same house for 20 years. We've had the same package for, I don't know, a billion years, probably the same 20 years. And so I called our uh, cable company 
and I got our phone put onto our cable bill <clears throat> so we know our phone we don't have a separate phone bill we have, it's all part of the package and I actually got them to take off a ton of channels that we don't watch we don't miss and my bill was about $200 a month and it went down to 160 a month which is a big deal when you look at it over a year we are now considering cutting out cable TV altogether and going with um, either a Roku box or a there's other names, Cody Box. I think there's a Google Box out there. So we're doing some research into that. We're still looking at it. Being Canadian sometimes though, those boxes are much more um, value rich in the States than they are in Canada because of the something to do with uh, what they're allowed to show or what the contracts are with those companies and the TV shows. So we do have to do our homework and make sure that the information we get is Canadian before we switch. So that is one thing that uh, we're still working on, but it did save us a lot of money right up front. 40 bucks a month was a big chunk every month, and I was very proud of myself for doing that. So those are our five changes since we started doing this uh, debt-free journey, and I'd love to hear everybody else's down below. This is a collab, so down below you'll see a bunch of links for other people who are also talking about their five big changes, and please leave a message. Give me a thumbs up, give those other people a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Don't forget, you can subscribe by looking at my little saving piggy bank here. Also, I'm going to link up a couple more videos, I think, over here, here, anywhere in this page, and link on those, and maybe I'll have a playlist for you as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about me. Talk to you soon.